This is a chart showing the price of copper, or well, the price of copper futures contracts at the New York Mercantile Exchange over the past two decades. Let's zoom in on 2021. All year, copper prices have been surging, just a straight shot higher. Copper up more than 30% this year. Well, demand for copper has dramatically increased. But I'm talking about the fundamental story for copper is a long-term, very positive one. Let's zoom back out. See that big dip in 2008 going into 2009? The last time copper prices got high, just before the, the financial uh, crisis in 2008, 2009, people were stealing copper wires out of homes that were being constructed. They were going into other buildings and ripping out plumbing pipes and copper wire. Copper has played a big role in the world economy for thousands of years. The Bronze Age? That happened because blacksmiths figured out how to forge copper with tin. Now, copper is used in electrical and heating equipment because its chemical properties make it such a useful conductor. It's used in car motors, household pipes, washing machines, all sorts of things we use every day. That's not to mention all the different copper alloys that get mixed into other metals and items. Also, the metal is so easily recyclable that most of the copper on Earth remains in the ground. In fact, only about 12% of all copper on Earth has been mined throughout human history and nearly all of it remains in circulation. Some copper in circulation right now could have once been jewelry or armor in ancient Egypt. So why are smart people like commodity analysts at Goldman Sachs warning about a copper shortage with dire consequences for the world economy? In May 2021, investment bank Goldman Sachs released a note calling copper the new oil. More importantly, the bank said copper prices could double in the next few years, jumping from just over $9,000 per ton to $20,000 per ton by 2025. Copper is the single best conductor of electricity known to physics as well as the periodic table. So if we're going to electrify the world and decarbonize that way, we absolutely need copper to do it. I agree with that. Um, the, the, tenor, the tenor of those reports was that uh, higher prices would have to incentivize new supply. And the tenor was that if that doesn't happen, we would have a copper shortage in the future. Uh, but it's not that we have a copper shortage uh, currently. Wall Street basically thinks copper could play a huge role in two major trends, electric vehicles and decarbonization. At the same time, there's not enough copper getting mined from underground deposits or coming from scrapyards to feed the coming demand. The industry cannot continue to do what, what it has previously or else there really is going to be a, a, a severe copper shortage um, as soon as all these big car companies start making more electric vehicles, it will happen like a light switch. We'll see that there's a copper shortage. So the so-called shortage isn't the world running out of copper. It's more about the current mining and recycling infrastructure not being able to meet a potential boom in demand. I would, on a longer term cyclical view, think that this is actually a great opportunity to position oneself for a long term copper bull market. Why? Because of these demand drivers going forward and uh, the biggest demand driver going forward over the next decade is green tech. When you have uh, further electrification, you need more wiring, you need more electrical components that can talk to electricity and make these things run. Copper is critical to that. And so people are just starting to realize just the magnitude of copper's presence throughout the economy. For a while now, commodities traders and economists have had a special nickname for copper. Well, they call him Dr. Copper for a reason. Well, Dr. Copper is saying that we are going to go and test those lows. We tend to call it Dr. Copper because it, it's, it people tease it has a PhD in economics. So when economic activity increases, the demand for copper increases, and then copper prices increase. In that sense, the copper market becomes a barometer for global economic growth, a leading indicator. Dr. Copper doesn't always provide a surefire diagnosis. Sometimes the connection between copper prices and economic growth breaks down. Copper is important for a lot of different local economies as well. Where does copper come from? You know, in the last 50 years or so, South America has become very important. Peru and Chile really dominating the copper supply there. 
Arizona is the leading copper producer in the United States. And if Arizona was a country, it would probably be fifth or sixth on the list in terms of top producers. Zambia in Africa has a very significant copper belt. Uh, there's a huge mine in Mongolia. So I would say, you know, basically, if you think about the Pacific Rim, as you come down the Western United States and through the Andes, that region has a lot of copper. And then if you go over to the Asia side of the Pacific Basin, then you're going to pick it up through Papua, New Guinea, up into Mongolia and Indonesia. So kind of the whole Pacific Basin and then some in Southern Africa. The copper industry is bracing for a boom in demand. Governments and companies around the world are preparing for a green energy revolution. Entirely new power grids using solar, wind, and water to power turbines and feed electricity into copper wires. What's more, electric cars need much, much more copper than their gas-powered counterparts. A typical gas-powered car have about 50 pounds of copper but an electric vehicle is more like 184 pounds of copper, you know, three and a half times more copper because you have more motors in the batteries in an electric vehicle, more electronics. Solar, similarly, conventional energy, normally you think about one metric ton of copper per megawatt of generating capacity. Renewable energies are four to six times that amount of copper. Solar installation could be something like 9,000 pounds per megawatt. Wind farms could be as much as 15 million pounds of copper. In individual wind turbines, about 800 pounds. So as we move to a decarbonized economy, we're replacing C in the periodic table with CU. Higher copper prices may have a silver lining. They'll cause mining companies to break ground on more new projects, since extracting copper will have a bigger payoff. There's also new technologies springing up to extract copper, like Atwin's company, Jetty. Jetty unlocks vast-stranded copper resources. We do that using a catalytic technology that was developed in partnership with the University of British Columbia with the intention of breaking the sulfur metal bond that exists in copper ores. For many decades, there's been a, an issue that the copper mining industry has been trying to solve for, which is oftentimes called the holy grail, and that's being able to use hydrometallurgy, the use of solutions, getting them in contact with copper ore, and being able to extract copper from low-grade material because there's a huge amount of, of copper that's stuck in, in, in low-grade material at copper mines, which historically was thought of as waste. Jetty specifically operates in, in the hydrometallurgy realm. We produce copper cathode that comes from leaching at big copper operations. Leaching uses two to three times less water than traditional extraction methods, has a much lower emissions profile, and the industry has an interest in, in producing more, more copper in that manner, greener copper. The boom in copper demand is just the beginning. Mining companies will have to strike a delicate balance. Rising copper prices means there's more demand for mining projects. If prices get too high, like astronomically high, companies could look for alternative metals for their green energy projects. At the same time, more copper mining means more of the metal enters the economy, which could bring prices lower, leading to fewer mining projects and back down to the current situation. Tight supply, high demand.